There are four essential things that you need to know about climate change. It's happening, it's serious, it's us, but we can solve it. But there's one extra thing that you need to know about climate change, and that's that we haven't solved it yet. Yes, there has been progress, but that progress is a long way from what's needed. So why? Why is humanity so rubbish at tackling the climate crisis? I wanted to break down each and every single reason we haven't solved climate change yet. To make sure I haven't forgotten anything, I put a call out out on Twitter and oh my god. Okay, so maybe I'm not going to be able to break down each and every single reason. And be sure to drop a comment below to tell me each and everything that I've left out. But for every problem that I do discuss, I also want to discuss the potential solutions, because if this video was just a long list of problems, it would be a little too depressing and useless. Hmm, depressing and useless. I think I've just found my new Tinder bio. Okay, so let's start big. Money. It should probably come as no surprise that what makes the world go round also makes the world go warm. There are a lot of people and a lot of companies who have a very strong financial interest in not solving climate change. If, for example, you've inherited a coal mine, you probably want to dig up and sell that coal and probably want to convince the rest of the world that buying that coal and burning it is actually a great and responsible thing to do. Now, of course, this doesn't matter if you live in a democracy because our leaders are elected by us and they work for us. And of course, we have a free press which is absolutely dedicated to the highest degree of factual accuracy. Oh, wait. Now this is a huge problem and a hugely talked about problem. I would probably say that the word that came up the most under my Twitter callout was the word capitalism. Oh wait, I'm pronouncing that wrong. Capitalism. So what can we actually do about this? Well, look, I'm not going to be able to solve the entire global economic system in a small part of a single YouTube video. For something so complex, you'd probably need like two entire YouTube videos. Some argue that climate change is just a symptom of the global economic and social system in which we live, and that in order to treat the symptom, we need to treat the root cause. But I don't necessarily buy this logic. I mean, if I went to the doctor and... So your headache is caused by stress. Okay. So, so you're going to have to stop being stressed. Great, I'll definitely work on that, but in the meantime, I really need some painkillers. No, that would just be treating the symptom. But the symptom is making me more stressed. More stressed? I just told you to get less stressed. Ugh, patience. So even if you are someone who thinks we ultimately need to change the world's economic system, we still need to do as much as we can, as fast as we can, to treat that symptom in the economic system we currently have. So we can call attention to companies, journalists, and especially politicians who have an economic incentive in us not solving climate change. We can call up and write to our elected officials to tell them when we think they're doing a bad job and when we think they're doing a good job. And we can vote and encourage others to vote with climate change in mind. We can push for new climate laws, which would mean that the damages that fossil fuels cost are reflected in their price, whether that's the damages to our health from air pollution or the damages to the planet's health through climate change. And wherever possible, we can bypass these political roadblocks through community climate projects. Okay, so now that's all completely sorted. What else is holding us back? Well, we are. You see, we often think about climate change wrong. Climate change is everywhere, and when something is everywhere, it can feel like it's nowhere. Our stupid little monkey brains are developed for problems like... Oh no! Snake! 
and solutions like Must run away from snake And we're not so good at Oh no! Gradually unfolding global crisis must completely transform energy system We naturally think in the short term and our politicians are short term too always focused on what's going to get them re-elected in the next few years not what's going to keep the planet as livable as possible in the next few decades to deal with this, we need to remember that climate change is not far off, in time or in space. Climate change is already turbocharging extreme weather events, from downpours to deadly heat waves across the world today. When disaster hits, we need to have these conversations about the role of climate change. We also need to focus on the win-wins we stand to gain by tackling climate change, whether that's saving millions of lives from air pollution or creating more beautiful, livable cities. Thinking too short term isn't the only problem with our thinking about climate change. We often don't understand the essential facts, especially around how serious the crisis is. Facts like how once CO2 is in the atmosphere, it sticks around for hundreds, even thousands of years, or that there's a brief and rapidly closing window in which to act. It doesn't help, of course, that there is heaps of misinformation out there, and that even trusted news sources have all too often tried to present a balance between climate science and climate science denial. So what can we actually do about our dumb brains and our dumb news? Well, we can talk about climate change as much as possible with our friends and with our families, even with, or perhaps especially with, people who aren't as engaged as we are. We can check the posts that we're sharing online and be sure to amplify trusted voices. Like say there was a YouTube channel from someone with a PhD in atmospheric physics from the University of Oxford dedicated to explaining the climate crisis as accurately and as accessibly as possible, I would be sure to like, comment, subscribe and share those posts as wide as possible. Hypothetically, of course. But sometimes we're frozen from action, not because we don't care, but because we care too much. I've met and spoken with so many people who feel like there's no point in acting because we're already doomed. But that's just not how climate change works. It's various degrees of bad, not a switch that suddenly flicks from okay to oh no. I have a whole video on this topic up here, by the way. But even knowing this, the whole situation is still kinda not good. And that knowledge can overwhelm us. I say this from personal experience. We need to take care of ourselves and connect with people who share our fears, as well as sharing our hopes. And speaking of sharing our hopes, all too often we just focus on the bad world that we want to avoid. We also need to dedicate time to thinking about the beautiful world that we want to create. And while we're thinking of things we want to improve about the world, we have to be honest with ourselves. Climate change may affect everyone, but climate change does not affect everyone equally. The people who are most responsible for the crisis are not the same people who will suffer the most from the crisis. And this applies in lots of different ways. Higher and lower income countries, more advantaged and disadvantaged people within countries and even the difference between older and younger generations. We can work on this by lifting up and amplifying people from these groups, people who are often on the front lines of climate impacts and climate solutions, and as well as the need to pay attention to people from marginalized groups, we also need to pay actual money. Our resistance to changing our own behaviour is also a major problem, and many of us in wealthier countries simply consume too much. In fact, the richest 10% of the world's population is responsible for around 50% of the world's emissions. And now you might be about to say, Damn the richest 10% and their 
pulling emissions. But in a global context, the richest 10% means anyone earning more than around $35,000 a year. So given the demographics of my audience, you might now be about to say, damn, me and my appalling emissions? But understandably, being told to change your life isn't exactly appealing. We can help people see the small actions that can make huge differences, like cutting down on red meat or using public transport more often. We need to have these conversations in kind and non-judgmental ways, because conversations like these never happen. Did I tell you that I'm gonna get a new truck? You monster! Well, good point. I'll get a bus pass instead. And Oh look, I have a whole video about how not to talk about climate change. But being able to change aspects of your life means having the resources, the time and the money in order to do so. If you're already struggling, it's just not going to happen. Oh my god, I think I've broken my arm. Well, did you know that oat milk has a 10 times lower carbon footprint than dairy? So we can push for the changes that will enable people to shift their lives from home insulation to better public transit. This is all well and good, but as my form teacher told me when I was 13, It's not just your actions that need to change, it's your attitude. Our attitude to the world around us is often fundamentally damaging. We often see the natural world as something that just gives us stuff, rather than something that we ourselves are a part of. And of course we want to improve our quality of life, but we need to realise that more stuff does not necessarily mean more <laughs> happy. <laughs> of course, changing these attitudes that are so fundamental to many of our societies is tough. We need to reconnect with ourselves, with the people around us, with the world around us. And we need to reimagine what the word value means. We have a lot to learn from other societies here, whether that's indigenous societies or societies from parts of the world that are distant from our own. There's one other reason that we haven't solved climate change, and that's that it's not actually easy to solve climate change. Yes, there are fantastic solutions like solar and wind, which have become breathtakingly cheap, but getting to net zero globally means we have to decarbonize absolutely everything, including tough sectors like farming, industry, and transportation. Of course, it doesn't help that the world's response is all too often, Ugh, I'll do it later. And now we have only a few decades to get the job done. It's not just a huge technical problem, it's also a huge social problem, making sure people aren't left behind by the transition. So we need to work as hard as possible as soon as possible. That means doing what we can today and researching what we could do tomorrow. Okay, so that's it. That's every reason we haven't solved climate change yet, and what we need to do to solve the fact that we haven't solved climate change yet. You're welcome, world. But seriously, there are just so many points that were raised on Twitter that I simply haven't had a chance to discuss here. So please do leave me a comment with what you think is the biggest problem, as well as the best solution. And if you've watched this video and you're grappling with the balance between societal and individual action on climate change, check out this video I made a little while ago. And while you're clicking on things, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss all my future videos on the problems and solutions to the climate crisis. Okay, until next time. Bye. Like it? No.